Whether it's cobalt-60, cesium-137, or uranium-238, radioactive nuclei emit energy in the form of radiation. This emission is a natural process that helps to stabilize the nucleus. Radioactive nuclei are radioactive because they contain more neutrons than protons. Radiation is released until this neutron-to-proton ratio is equal, rendering it non-radioactive. Radiation released by nuclei can be categorized into three types of emission. These are alpha particles, beta particles, and gamma radiation. Alpha and beta particles are atomic and subatomic particles with low to moderate energy. An alpha particle is made of two neutrons and two protons. Generally, alpha particles are not very dangerous, as they do not have enough energy to penetrate a sheet of paper or the surface layer of your skin. You are protected from alpha particles just by wearing clothes. Beta particles are high-energy electrons or positrons. Because they have more energy than alpha particles, they are more dangerous. They can pass through clothing, wood, and even aluminum foil. They can penetrate just below the skin surface, causing first-degree burns. Due to their low penetrating power, alpha and beta particles are not a major threat outside the body. They are mainly dangerous if they get inside the body, as there are no barriers to stop them. This could happen by inhaling or swallowing radioactive particles. In the body, alpha and beta particles strike organs and tissue, causing internal burns and ionizing DNA, leading to cancer. The last type of emission is gamma radiation, or gamma rays for short. Gamma rays have significantly more energy than alpha and beta particles. Because of their extremely high energy, gamma rays are classified as penetrating radiation. As such, they can pass through water, concrete, and even some metals. Since gamma rays can penetrate solid objects, it makes them especially dangerous to the human body. Gamma radiation can pass through the skin, ionizing proteins and DNA in your organs and internal tissue. When gamma rays collide with an atom, they're absorbed by the atom's electrons. The electron becomes energized and gets knocked out of its orbit. But what if the electron is part of a bond between two atoms in a molecule? In this case, the electron gets ripped off the atom, and the molecular bond is broken. In a biological setting, this damages macromolecules like DNA, proteins, and lipids in the body. When a person is exposed to extremely high levels of gamma radiation, it causes widespread damage to millions of macromolecules simultaneously. On the level of a cell, gamma radiation denatures proteins and fragments DNA. Cell membranes are ruptured open and organelles are damaged. Cell repair mechanisms are rendered non-functional and damage cannot be mitigated. In that one or two second exposure, the individual is flooded with high energy photons that penetrate every facet of the body. As a result, cells, tissues, and organs all shut down as they are too damaged to function. The first symptoms of acute radiation exposure are vomiting and diarrhea. This is because cells in the GI tract respond to extensive damage by undergoing programmed cell shutdown or apoptosis. This halts intestinal functions causing diarrhea and vomiting. Another symptom is a drop in red blood cell count. This is because bone marrow, which makes red blood cells, starts to degenerate from damage. Major organs like the lungs, liver, and kidneys shut down. Once this happens, it's over. Depending on the amount of radiation exposure, these symptoms may happen over the course of several days, weeks, or months. In order to receive such a lethal dose of gamma radiation requires two important factors to be met. A close proximity to the source of radiation and a high rate of emission from said source. Two examples where these factors were key were Japanese civilians exposed to gamma emission from the Hiroshima and Nagasaki fireballs and the Russian firemen who responded to the Chernobyl plant disaster. Both of these events resulted in people succumbing to acute radiation exposure over a short period of time. But one of the most famous examples of lethal radiation exposure wasn't a place or an event, but rather a man named Dr. Louis Slotin. Louis Slotin was a physicist who worked on the Manhattan Project. He continued nuclear research at the Los Alamos Laboratory after the end of World War II. On May 21, 1946, Louis Slotin and seven other Los Alamos personnel were observing a criticality experiment using a core of plutonium-239. Louis Slotin was showing fellow physicist Alan Graves 
how to conduct the experiment. Slotin was lowering a hemispherical shell made of beryllium over a core of plutonium-239. When the shell was lowered, neutrons emitted from the plutonium core would bounce off the shell and strike the core, increasing the likelihood of reaching criticality, a state where a sustained nuclear chain reaction can occur. The closer the beryllium shell got to covering the entire core, the more it approached criticality. Slotin's goal was to see how close the core could get to criticality without triggering a chain reaction. Slotin, however, made a fatal error in judgment that ultimately cost him his life. Instead of using the recommended chims to lower the shell, he used a flathead screwdriver. The story goes, as Slotin was lowering the shell, the tip of the screwdriver slipped just a fraction of an inch, causing the shell to fall and cover the entire plutonium core. The core went supercritical in an instant, and a bright blue light was seen from beneath the shell. Slotin quickly pulled off the beryllium shell to stop the chain reaction from proceeding. Doing so released a dose of over 1,000 rad of gamma radiation into the room. Though there were seven other observers present, Louis Slotin, being less than a foot from the core, received the brunt of radiation. Alan Graves, who was standing directly behind Louis Slotin, was significantly shielded by Slotin's body. Slotin received a dose of 1,000 rad. 25 rad is the lowest exposure that causes noticeable health effects. Slotin's dose was 40 times higher. Immediately, he began vomiting, a telltale sign of acute radiation exposure. Over the next several days, his health declined rapidly. Burns appeared on his hands, arms, and inside his abdomen. Louis Slotin experienced a gruesome and rapid shutdown of bodily functions, resulting in his passing on May 30, 1946, just six days after being exposed to gamma radiation for mere seconds. Despite the fact that gamma radiation can penetrate solid objects, there are ways to protect yourself. Though gamma rays can pass through some metals, lead is an exception. Lead has a very high density compared to other metals because of its tightly packed lattice structure. The nuclei are so close together that instead of gamma photons passing through, they're absorbed by electrons, thereby stopping gamma radiation in its tracks. The energized electron is ejected, turning the lead atom into a positively charged ion. How well the lead blocks the gamma radiation depends on the thickness of the lead itself. To stop all gamma radiation from passing through a layer of protective lead, you would need a lead shield with the thickness of 1.3 feet. Historically, lead has made an excellent shield against gamma radiation. In the docudrama Chernobyl, following the plant explosion, investigators need an accurate reading of the radiation around the plant grounds. Russian General Vladimir Pikalov volunteers to drive a truck, equipped with a radiation detection device mounted on the front. To shield him from harmful gamma rays, the truck was covered in thick lead panels. The areas he measured were 15,000 rotengen, or roughly 13,000 rad, 13 times the radiation that Louis Slotin was exposed to. In demonstrating the effectiveness of lead shielding, Pikalov not only survived exposure to an area with dangerously high radiation levels, but he also lived for another 17 years. Tungsten is another dense metal that can also block gamma rays. Since it's 1.7 times denser than lead, it's actually more effective. Just half an inch of tungsten can fully stop gamma rays. However, tungsten is seven times more expensive than lead and therefore is used much less for shielding. Sometimes science can be seen as difficult, foreign, and even boring. Yet, there are times when science grabs our attention and draws us in, yearning for more answers. Often, what draws us in are topics that are dark, macabre, or terrifying. It's with the intention of this video that you too were drawn in and sought to have your questions answered. Thanks for watching Dark Science.